We come to this fifth lesson in the series of repentance. Degeneration. You know, a lot of us, we've chased things that weren't right. I've been down the pathway of false doctrine. I, I centered the church in things other than Christ. And I misled others. You know, a lot of times when you realize that, I want you to know you're not condemned. You're being convicted. God convicts us. The devil condemns us. In conviction, there's always hope. If I repent, everything will be right. When it's condemnation, there's no hope. That's how you know it's the devil. When it's God, there's a way. There's a way to come out. No matter how bad it is. If I just repent, he'll take me in his arms. Put the ring on my finger. He'll put a new robe upon me. When that prodigal son came home. He came home, that was an old man that he met. That old man got up and ran to meet him. When you take a step towards God in repentance, God will step forward to meet you. The devil always tells you, there's no hope, you're condemned. He's a liar. God reveals something. It's only that he might make it right. This lesson, degeneration. We read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. If you neglect a plant and you don't take care of it, no, that plant will degenerate. If you don't take care of an animal, that animal will deteriorate. The same thing is true with human beings. There's always a pull in that nature of man to pull him down. You know, I've been to the big cities in America. I see people living on the streets. They're dirty. They have nothing. Some of those people are sick. 
But some of those people just neglected that life. Because they didn't take care of it. They ended up out there in those streets. And you look at a farm, you see the trees growing towards that farm. Those plants, those things are trying to grow back over into that farm. If you don't drive on these roads out here, in a few years, Nature will take it back and you won't even find that road. All those plants will grow over it. And if man neglects his conscience, that conscience will deteriorate. I knew a, a man that claimed to be a preacher. And talking to him, I realized he was a liar. And he lied all the time. Some of it was so obvious. I discovered something. He lied so much. He lost the ability to tell the truth. The scripture says, how shall we escape if we neglect salvation? Now, these people in the book of Hebrews had already been saved. And this, the writer is talking about that old nature. If you, if you neglect that spiritual life, that old nature waits to take it back. If you stop praying, you stop reading your Bible. You stop fellowshipping in the church. It won't be long before you'll be what you used to be. I've seen people come in the church. And those people were saved from drugs. Saved from alcohol. And God delivered them. They're faithful to the church. They're faithful to God in their life of prayer and the word. But all of a sudden, there's a chance to get a better job. They can make a little bit more money. Surely God wants them to have that job. But there's one problem. They're going to have to work on the Lord's day. And pretty soon they take that job. And they start missing the fellowship and the work begins to take their time. And before long, they begin to fall back into what they were. I've seen this over and over again. And it finally comes to a place that they lose everything in their life. Even the job that they took. If you see, if you see a man on top of a building, 
And you see that man fall. Instantly you say he's dead. You don't have to see him hit the ground. You know he's dead. Because what began that fall is going to finish it. When a little child gets near stairs, we have to be careful. We don't wait till they fall that first step. We keep them from those stairs. I was at a man's house one time. And he, his daughter was running all over the house. And I was so nervous about it. There were stairs, it was far down. I thought that little girl's going to fall. They need to close the door or block those stairs. He neglected to do that. Two nights later, I had a call at the hotel. Please pray. My daughter fell down the stairs. She's at the hospital. It never had to happen. We don't have to fall back out there into sin. We have to care for this spiritual life. I remember in our church a leader fell in sin. I remember I received a phone call. They told me that my brother had fallen. My heart was broken. He fell in adultery. And he was destroyed. I just couldn't believe it. But then I thought, what was the first step? There had to be something that he let go in that spiritual life. He came and spoke to the pastor. And the pastor said, didn't the message touch your heart? Didn't God deal with you? He said, God dealt with me every week. He said, but as I walked out of the building, he said, I just threw off that conviction. He went down. And he has never recovered what he lost. The little things in our lives. God shows us those things. He knows, he knows they're a connection to something big. Every big tree that you see came from a small seed. And a small seed of sin left in that life will grow into a huge corruption. I'm, I'm lived in a foreign country and I had a little machine that made bread. And I took that bread, I'd put it in there. And it had a little package of that yeast, the leaven. You pour that in there. I'd turn the machine on. When you come back, there's supposed to be bread. And when I came back, Instead of being bred like this, it was all smashed down like that. I didn't understand why. So I tried it again. Same thing happened. So I began to read the instructions. And it said that if that happens to the bread, 
That there is a reason for that. It said if you're in a city that's high up, a city that's in the mountains, then that little package of yeast you're only supposed to use half of it. And I found out that as you walk with God, you get to the high places in the spirit. Less and less of those things can be in that life. Jesus said a little bit of that level destroy the whole thing. Jesus' life was totally pure. All throughout nature we see death. Life is just our ability to resist that death. And our spiritual life, in it is the power to resist death. But that power only comes as you walk in the Spirit. If we don't water a plant, then the sun that used to give it nourishment, the same sun will dry it up and kill it. And you and I, if we don't walk in the Spirit, we will be destroyed by the lusts of the flesh. Thank God He's given us this life. But that life must be continued in. When you look at the natural and the spiritual, you see the same things true in nature that you see in the, in the spiritual. If we don't take care of that spiritual life, it will be destroyed. I don't have to destroy the plants at my house. All I have to do is just leave them alone. Don't take care of them. And it, nobody has to come and destroy them. Nature itself will do that. And if you don't take care of the spiritual life, then that old nature will rise up automatically. How shall we escape? If we, if we neglect that salvation, how can we escape? If I don't learn how to swim, and I fall in the water, then I'm going to drown. And if I don't take care of that spiritual life, then it'll be consumed. That old man waits to take it back. There's salvation, neglect, and escape. Those three words are connected together. We, we have salvation. But if we neglect it, there will be no escape. We see animals that live in this world. There's animals that live underground. And those animals don't are not able to see well. They're blind. Some of them have eyes, but they can't see. Why is that? They chose to live under the ground. And nature said, you don't need your sight. So it just takes it away. The same thing works in the spiritual. The capacity for a believer, for a, the capacity to believe, 
is the greatest attribute given to man. But if you neglect that ability, you continue to walk in unbelief, then you destroy that ability to believe God. It was said of the Pharisees, they could not believe. When the man was gave those talents to those three men, the only man that was punished is the one that did nothing with that talent. It wasn't a matter of how much they did. It was just a matter, did they do anything with it at all? God searches that life of the believer. We've talked in this last lesson that we had about revival, bringing the church back to the center, which is Christ. If the church neglects that long enough, then it becomes impossible to restore it. You look in the history of the church, you see that God does not restore denominations. Once they lose that ability to have life, he raises up a different one. That old skin cannot hold the new wine. The abilities have been given to us. We must use them. We've been talking in this school. God's conforming us to the image God wills to do through you and I what he did through Jesus. We'd better seek for that to happen. If we don't, then we'll wind up in unbelief. There's people in this world today they wouldn't believe a miracle if they saw it right in front of their eyes. They've rejected it so long they no longer have faith to believe. In America, there's a little animal. He lives in the caves. He, he has eyes. But when the scientists looked at those eyes, inside it was destroyed. They, they had eyes. But they could not see. And you look at Ju Judas as he followed Jesus. He walked with him. He's seen all the miracles the others He's seen Jesus. But at the end of it all, he betrayed him. In the front, everything looked all right. But underneath it all, it was filled with corruption. If you, you can imagine a bridge over a river. And the bridge is made out of wood. Everything looks good with that bridge. With that wood may be rotted. And as a man goes across that bridge, everything looks normal. But they fall through it. They didn't know that underneath it was being destroyed. I know a man that he was faithful to the church. But his wife, she began to work underneath. She was an instrument of the devil. 
with him everything looked normal on the top. But underneath she kept working on him. See, you don't need to pray that much. You don't have to go to all those church services. Everything looked normal on the surface. But in the end, one day he came to the pastor. He had fallen into sin. Sin so deep that when you try to talk to him about Christ, he cannot believe. I talked to him for an hour. And all he says is, I hurt God, I hurt God. I just can't believe he'll forgive me. You know what the unpardonable sin is? It's destroying that faith. You destroy the ability to believe. We have to be so careful. Nothing in our lives that's not of Christ is excusable. Everything must be dealt with. It's not of him. We have spiritual sight. But if we don't, if we don't, if we neglect that spiritual sight, then the same thing will happen to us that happens to those animals under the earth. We have eyes, but we cannot see. There's a sense of sound. I can hear the voice of God. But if I neglect that spiritual life, I'll lose that ability to hear. Some of you in this room, there may have been a time you walk closer to God than you do now. You know what I mean. It's hard to get back there. God trusted you and you betrayed that. There's a sense of touch. We can touch God in prayer. If you stop praying, you may lose the ability to touch God. A woman come to a preacher friend of mine. She said, please pray for me that I would be able to pray. And God told that preacher, He said, don't pray for her. He said, when she could pray, she refused to. And now she wants to pray. And she can't. She neglected that. And it was destroyed. We have a sense of taste. There's a hunger for God. There's a hunger being stirred in your heart. I see it in your heart. I'm watching you in this school. But when you leave this school, you better feed that hunger. Continue to stay in prayer. And the word of God. I meet students all over this world. And the moment they see me, I haven't been praying. I didn't continue doing what I supposed to. <coughs> they destroy that hunger. The hardest thing to do is to pray when you have no spiritual hunger. It's, it's hard to serve God when there's no spiritual hunger there. But you neglect that spiritual hunger. And we don't know if God will ever come back and visit that life. 
There is a capacity for inspiration in our lives. In Christ, all things are new. But I, if, I, if I refuse to stay in that place, if I refuse to go on with God, in the spiritual life becomes dull and ugly. We have a capacity to love God. The more you love Him, the more you will love. The more like Jesus you are, the more the compassion of Christ will flow through your life. But you neglect that. You will be, become a hateful person. We've been given so great a salvation. There's a potential for it to die. Everyone in this room knows what death is. Death is final. But that tells us that on the other side that if you care for that life the potential of eternal life we don't know how far that life can go. Death is destruction. But life is ever growing. Moving ever onward with God. Degeneration. If you don't care for that life, the old nature waits to take it back. I ask you this morning, is there something God touched in that life? Maybe he touched it a long time ago. You refused to deal with it. That thing is still there in your life. You've continued to go to church. You think everything's all right. But like Judas, you're rotting underneath. The wood on that bridge looks no. normal, but it's rotted. God touches something in that life. He, he demands its removal. If we don't deal with it, destruction is up the way for us. But if we will walk with God, Walk with him in obedience. Walk in the regeneration. We will not only have abundant life, but we'll share that abundant life with all those around us. We live this life for more than us. God gave us a life that it might be poured out unto others. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, there's things you've dealt with in our lives. Lord, we just let it stay. Lord, we thought that you forgot about it. God, you've not forgotten. Lord God, forgive us. We come back to visit that place again. Lord, we put it on the altar of sacrifice. God, forgive us. We're sorry for what we've done. We want to walk with you in life. 
Lord, there's things that you're dealing with in our lives right now. Lord, God, give us victory. We surrender our lives to you. What you deal with, you do it because you love us. The things that you show us keep us from you. God, forgive us. Bring us into the image of your Son. Restore us unto you. Lord, open up the river of living water in our lives. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for misleading people. We repent of the lies we told. We kneel at your feet this morning. God, forgive us. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.